Hey guys, it's John again from fishyacker.com. I'm joined again by my buddy Miles Berghoff. This time we're going to kind of talk more about the contrast between fishing from a kayak and fishing from a powerboat. Thanks again for coming back on, Miles. Uh, like, I, like I mentioned a second ago, let's talk about the pros and cons of a kayak versus going in a powerboat. For instance, with, with myself, one of the reasons I like using kayaks, and like I said, I grew up with powerboats, uh, was because especially lake fishing, especially if there's a lot of shoreline cover like lily pads and I drill in grass and stuff like that, you can slide up in that stuff that you can't necessarily get into with a, with a larger boat. Uh, have you experienced that yet, or you're just getting into kayak? Oh, absolutely. I've fished uh, picnic tables. I've fished uh, <laughs> uh, trash cans, all types of stuff. There's a local lake. I mean, we got a lot of rain recently, so a lot of these lakes, they, they flooded, and I was literally catching fish off of uh, park benches. <laughs> Try a shopping cart. If you ever find a shopping cart, it's going to hold bass. I have. Uh, actually, in the Sacramento Delta, you go into Stockton, there are sharpened carts everywhere, and you're catching all, all kinds of fish it's out of It's an amazing them. structure. They just get up inside yeah. the shopping carts. Yeah. But, yeah, the kayak is, is awesome because you can get to those really hard-to-reach places that you, you can't with a regular boat. When I do that, you know, we both run the Predator XL. Um, I like to, to put in the just the flush mount XO Ridge um, uh, console. That way, you know, I, I can just get in those real tight spots. And it's really cool because I'm a shallow water guy. That's right. just what I love to do, you know. Um, and we've talked, you know, you, you do, uh, you like a lot of different techniques and you've got your own style, especially in the, in the small mouth side of things. Um, but for me, I love going up shallow, catching fish, um, you know, in the, in the real skinny water. And, I mean, the kayak is the best platform for that that you can possibly have. And, uh, and I just, I just got the, the micro power pole and that's going to change everything for me because one of the struggles with kayak fishing is not necessarily a, a, a con, um, but it's, uh, it, one of the struggles is, is boat positioning while you're standing up. Right. And so and it, it, having something there, whether it's a power pole micro or some type of, of, uh, you know, anchoring system, be able to, to stop you know, silently and then pick apart an area has been really, really important for me. Whether before I was like holding on to reeds and stuff, you know, but, uh, but yeah, and it's really cool. And the cool thing is you can actually use that predator, uh, paddle as, you know, as a stand up paddle board, um, you know, technique and, and move around like that. So, uh, shallow water is really, um, you know, or the kayak is really transforming my shallow water game. Yeah. Because I'm really finding fish that I normally don't. I mean, have you caught fish in, in places that you couldn't ever catch? Absolutely. That boat? Yeah. There, there's a lake, one of the lakes here that I fish in this part of Pennsylvania. And there's some similar waters back home in Virginia that we, we used to hit where the whole shoreline, you're talking like 50 or 100 yards of the shoreline out into the lake is all lily pads. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's all sorts of crap growing in it and you know and and the power boats will be always working the edge there's one here where the power boats it's like it's like they're they're it's like a like a chain like one after the other all the way around the lake and are one by one hit the same exact shoreline the edge the edge of those pads and us we, it's funny because you always hear them we'll paddle up into the middle of this the stuff uh, you don't ever want to fall out in there because who knows what's under there but you, you paddle up into this stuff and you can throw top water through it you can punch it and you can just get up in there, and it's funny because you hear the guys in the distance on the power boats. Oh, they're they're caught. Look at those guys who don't know what they're doing. And we'll get up in there, and these guys, you don't see a single person catching a fish. You pull out like an eight-pound bass. And of course, you got to hold it up and wait. Hey, look! And then when you let it go yeah. in front of them, they all like start cussing at you. But that's one of the biggest things for lakes, and then the, the rivers. What we're doing here on the Susquehanna. They're really, the kayaks are the best way to do it. Yeah, basically, if you really want to fish the Susquehanna River, you either have to have a kayak or jet boat. Because uh, you have a lot of gravel bars, a lot of ledges, the kayaks, you can go anywhere. You need like two inches of water. You know, yeah. in the middle of summer, you got a lot of exposed boulder rock the size of Volkswagens. And the kayaks, you can just float right down there and you, you go like miles out of even seeing a, another powerboat. But that, so that's really what it is. For, really, for flowing shallow rivers, it's the best way. And for lakes getting into that crud. Oh, yeah. 
And it's it's really cool because I mean you're getting to fish that have never seen a lure in a lot of situations because you can go on lakes. I mean, like the one I told you right down the the you know the road from my house has yeah. never these fish have never been caught. In fact, they have are so unmolested and and just perfect and healthy that when you catch them and you lift those bass, it's like a catfish is grasping onto your thumb you can just sit there and shake them and they won't come off their, their jaws are so like you know healthy and, and never been you know broke or anything like that so uh you know that's the really cool thing going to those places you never can go on a regular boat or get any access at all you know no launch ramps or anything what do you think about when you go back down say to florida and now you have a kayak i mean that like getting into these like cypress swamps i can uh, you can imagine Going in there with yeah, that sounds pretty terrifying with some of those those alligators. But nah, now, just keep your paddle in your hand. You just punch them away. I'm oh, worried I about water moccasins, to be honest, falling out into your kayak. <laughs> don't bother me. Snakes don't bother me. Well, that's the thing. Is actually when it's cold out, when it's really cold, you will have uh, snakes come to you. You know, I've had I've had um, a baby cottonmouth climb into my boat. Because the the heat on the the engine, that's yeah. why I just turned it off, would attract them, and they they'd come over and hang out. The same thing on a kayak, probably when it's cold. I, I had a friend years ago. I remember we were doing a tournament, and he was fishing off of the side of the kayak and wasn't even thinking about it. You know, like most of your kayaks have large black hatches up on the bow. He just had to look forward to pat, do a couple paddle strokes and a mox and a, a snake had just crawled up onto the bow and bur- curled up on top the hatch. And people yeah. say you can't run on water, like walk on water where this guy did. I mean, I don't know. And he got a picture <laughs> of it. And the guy like turns and gets a picture of it as he's like jumping out the boat. <laughs> Oh it's my hilarious. God. So she's had a perfect clear shot of the, of the snake on the patch of the kayak. Oh, it was, it was great. Dude, that, that's... <laughs> and then you're only like that. feet from him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm scared of... I'm more scared of snakes. I, I like snakes and I don't mind alligators, but snakes, I don't know. Some of those aggressive snakes will come at you. And I'd rather be yeah. in a boat than a, out in a kayak actually with a snake. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, just overall, it's really good to, to, you know, I don't care where it is in the country. I'm going to fish out of the kayak in those places I can't go. I take it with me on tournaments. You know, the, the it's on the top of my, my, my truck. That's cool. So. You know, open up a lot of new water for you. So what, what kind of tactics and stuff are you doing in the kayak that you might not do specifically in the power boat? I was amazed at how, you know, Flipping is is my favorite technique. I love flipping. Um, that's you know heavy cover is kind of my deal. Um, but when I was when I first got into the kayak, I'm just like, well, sitting down, this isn't going to be too great with the kayak, you know, or you know, with flipping techniques because you don't have as much range of motion. But I was amazed at how how well you could actually can. You have to adjust your techniques. You're not most of the time when you're flipping these days. People are talking about uh, flipping, but they're actually pitching, you know, where you're actually holding the, the lure and then right. doing a pendulum swing into the cover. Some, you, if you get good enough, you're not even touching the lure, you know, you're just doing that pendulum swing. But with, in the kayak, same type of cover, same areas, but I'm actually doing kind of a round-the-world uh, pitch. Um, it's almost like a roll cast and a pitch in one, and I'm getting into those same spots. And uh, and doing extremely well you, with the kayak, you can really sneak up on those fish, get really close to the right. cover, and you can you can just smash them on it. So flipping is my favorite technique so far. And like skipping too, sidearm casting and skipping up under structure, under piers and stuff. You're so you can be so low in the water, and your angles are just the the, the biggest thing is if you're sight fishing, you're penalized a little bit with the kayaks, even standing yeah. up in them. Uh, but get, just getting angles into, you know, if you're used to fishing, you know, casting, sitting down, that's the big thing. I do a lot of fly fishing, too. That's the biggest challenge there is when you got somebody that fly fishes, teaching them how to cast from a seated position. Because a lot of people grow up casting a conventional rod sitting down. So it's not as much of a challenge. But fly fishing is a totally different technique. But just being able to, like, sidearm cast and get up under structure and under, you know, shoreline trees and brush that you can't get to in a power boat because your elevation. That's another big one that I've seen. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
it's it, it, it really it, you really can't I, one thing I've learned is you cannot have any preconceived notions when it comes to kayak fishing because I never thought I'd like kayak fishing but I love it now and you you just got to go out there and try it you've got to adjust the way you do things a little bit but overall you're going to be able to to catch fish that you never would have dreamed of catching yeah. out of a regular boat and so you know i'm i'm all for it if i think of something that i don't think that i can do out of the kayak i try it and pretty much every single time i'm just like blown away that how well it works yeah farm ponds creeks ditches you know yeah. things and like that you can get to you can't get to otherwise is the way you, know, you don't even have to trailer it it's yeah no Speaking of which, how do you how do you uh, uh, a car top your Predator XL? I had this funny because I don't know if you've ever seen the pictures of it. Some of them actually got a little bit viral. I've got a, a 27, 2007 Toyota Yaris two door hatchback. Oh yeah, it's about the size of the desk I'm sitting at right now, right? Uh, and I've got Thule racks on it with Malone C wings and stingers on it. So what I do, I can take the bow of the boat. I put the extinger extension. So if anyone wants to look it up, look it up on my loan auto racks. I put the bow of the boat up into the V extension, and then I just come around to the back, and I shove the back up. Uh, pretty easy, actually. And then when I'm using my, my wife's Ford Escape, uh, same type of thing, except I take a – you might see the videos on that. I just take a bath rug, and I lay that across the edge yeah. of the tailgate. And then I just put the bow up, so I have to pick the whole boat up, and then I just slide the stern of the boat up too. So there's techniques for it, but then I also typically, if I know I'm if if I'm going longer distances or something, I'll often trailer the boat. Yeah, I cheat. Well, then I gotta have a ramp or somewhere to launch it often, so or park yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know what? I actually want to show you my my uh, system. You want to walk outside with? Absolutely, it's good. Right. Yeah. So I made this thing. So I had I, I was I have the round bars which are really hard to get a good rack system for the Malone one wouldn't work for me because it, it just kind of spun um, so I ended up making my own system right here sorry if it gets a little bit blown out it's all good had it all open but here it is right here so we've got the we've got this rack system and uh, round bars here. Got the got this um, this tubing. It's like PVC pipe, and I actually made these these runners all the way down the bottom of the boat. So it's just oh, like cool. a, a boat trailer. Yeah, like a skid system. Yeah. Exactly. So I just I use the same system you do with the bathroom mat. You were actually the very first kayak um, uh, uh, video I saw online. Cool. And uh, yeah, so that, I got that idea from you. And I've got this system, and it works perfectly. I've already put 12,000 miles on this baby. Wow. So, it, yeah, it works perfect. You know, you can always come up with your own ideas to, to with, with it when it comes to kayaks, you know. But they're very um, rooftop, you know, portable once you find the right system. Yeah, and that, that's the thing. Like, when we started doing this, say, 15 or 20 years ago, there Again, I keep saying there was no kayak fishing. So everything we had to manufacture ourselves in our basements, in our garages, in our yards, now there's a lot of stuff available for you. If you don't want to make it yourself or you want to buy something that's like commercial gray, like quality, high quality manufacturing, but you can always, there's still ways that you can use your own, you know, DIY skills and make something like that. That's really, really cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I love tinkering i know you do too i know you're a tinkerer man <laughs> absolutely <laughs> i've been doing it for a while yeah yeah so yeah i want to again i want to thank you for coming on you know this is i, I really appreciate you uh be, before we go again if you want to give a plug for your your tv show and let people know how they can get in touch with you yeah you know you can check out sweetwater on uh you know all the major social media uh, sites facebook uh instagram twitter um, YouTube, we're on YouTube, and then go to SweetwaterFishingTV.com. You can watch all the episodes on a app on Roku and Smart TV and all those called Waypoint TV. Um, and then you can find me on Facebook, Miles Sonar Bergoff, and then also on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, as well as SonarFishing.com. So I really appreciate you bringing me on, man. I love talking fishing. 
love talking to you. And <laughs> thanks, Miles. We'll definitely have you on again. And again, if you've never seen the show, he's had the coolest theme song of all the fishing shows on TV. Dude, it's awesome. It's, it's cool. Awesome. <laughs> so thanks a lot, Miles. As always, everybody, be sure to subscribe to Fish Yacker on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and we'll catch you on the water. Fishyacker.com, the original kayak rigging video series.